Hi guys, so today um, what I'm going to do is add some particle effects to our Pong game. So this is its current state. It matches the original um, view of a Pong game. And what I'm going to do is to replace the ball with a fireball using particle effects. Now, first of all, let's go to initialize ball and create particle emitter. In FXGL, there are already some predefined particle emitters available. And you can call them. We can get an instance of an emitter by calling particle emitters dot and uh, the emitter that you want. I'm going to use fire. I'm also going to change some settings like start color i'm going to set to yellow and um, and color so as you can see there are many settings that you can um, play with and depending on what you choose for the settings you're going to end up with different effects i'm also going to change the blend mode so that it's not uh, it's not going to eat my graphics card because um, I'm running on an integrated graphics card. Um, if you're running on a dedicated one, then um, you should be fine with the standard or default blend mode, which is add. Right, so we've created our emitter. The next thing to do is to create an entity because our game world only works with entities. So we need to have this bridge between an emitter and an entity, which is essentially our control. So we add new particle control and pass the emitter. Finally, we add our entity to the game world. Now, before we run this, um, we need to remember that an entity is a very generic object. It doesn't have any information about where it is or what it should be doing. So we first need to add a position component, which will tell the entity where it should be within a game world. And these are essentially the middle of the screen, these coordinates. So that should spawn a fire effect right in the middle of the screen. Right, so we've got our fire effect. Next thing is to make it move in the same way our ball moves. So basically map the XY of this effect to the XY of our ball. Now, if you think about it, our ball is actually an entity in itself. So what we could do is simply attach our control to the ball itself. In which case we no longer need these things. And we need to remember to add the ball to the game world after all the changes to the entity. This is one of the advantages of the entity component control model, that we can mix and match various types of components and controls. So now our um, fire effect simply follows the ball because we assigned our control to um, that entity. We can still see the original view of the ball, which is ray-ish circle. Now that we have our particle effect, we probably don't want that circle anymore. So we go to the new ball creation method, which is in our Pong factory. And we can see that this is what creates the ball or initializes it. This is um, networking code that you shouldn't be ordering um, right now. So we got our um, bounding box. 
around the ball, which is a circle, and with radius five. So this is logic as it were. And this is the view of our ball. So if we, this, um, if we just comment this out, then what we're left with is the logical state of the ball, but it simply has no view. Considering that we already have a particle effect over the ball, this shouldn't matter. The only thing we're going to see now is just the effect itself. And so we now have a fireball in the game. So you can tweak various settings, say we can change the size um, of particles, say between 5 and 10. This is the radius of each particle. So it'll probably be slightly bigger than the logical bounding box. We can also change some stuff, um, say emission rate set to 1, 1 meaning 100%. I think the original is the original is 0 0.5, which is 50%. So that should result in slightly different effect now. Yeah, it's probably even more, um, even smoother now. So yeah, you can play around with these settings. And as you can see, it's not very difficult to implement particle effects in your game. So these are a few pretty fun ones. You have fire emitter, explosion, implosion, spark, smoke, um, rain. And these are essentially just settings. So you just create a particle emitter and assign various settings, uh, various settings to it. And by doing so, you're modifying how each particle will look. You can also play with colors, say light blue for start color and end could be purple. So now we have this color. Um, as you can see, it is a gradient between the start and end color. So it looks, um, it looks great. Now, as an extension, what you could do, um, by the way, the source code or the link to the source code is in the description as always. What you could do is as an extension or an exercise, change the view of the bat as well, which could be a little bit tricky because it's not just a single ball, so to speak. It's, um, well, it's a rectangle and you would have to replace it if you're going to replace it with a particle effect, then your particle effect should probably be twofold. One starting from the bottom, the other from the top, and they sort of meet in the middle, if that makes sense. So that was um, a small tutorial, short tutorial on how to use um, particle effects in your game. Hopefully this made sense. If you have any questions, um, feel free to email me and um, play around with FXGL. 0 0.34 is coming up next, and there will be a few um, changes to the API there to make it easier to implement new things. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.